Right, my first guest to help us start it off is Dr. Joseph Hill and Dr. Mike Lynch uh, with Plastic Surgeons of Lexington. Yes. yes, sir. Now I said breast reconstruction, and, and it starts a lot of times with breast cancer. Correct. Tell me about the, the reconstruction following that. Um, oftentimes, patients come to us not knowing a whole lot about what the reconstructive process is. Um, the, the process for breast reconstruction starts off with the tissue expander where we grow a breast pocket and then we convert that at a later date uh, to a permanent implant. Does that start right at the time of surgery or do you stage the process? Uh, typically it starts at the time of surgery unless the patient has uh, a reason to delay the, the reconstruction. Now, uh, Dr. Lynch, is, is it everybody a candidate for it or is there certain people that you want to do it? I think most people are candidates for reconstruction. They're always given an option. Some are obviously better surgical candidates, and I think a lot of that goes into overall health. Um, are you really a candidate for extended anesthesia time? But most people are candidates for um, breast reconstruction, and, and um, you know we see all kinds of different people to kind of figure out who's a better candidate. Um, but most people certainly um, you know can get a good result with uh, the you know the proper preoperative um, management. Okay. Is it all the same type of implant procedure or is it different? There are numerous ways to reconstruct a breast. You can use your own tissue from your tummy, for instance, uh, tissue from your back. You know, 90%, 95% of the reconstruction that we do is utilizing implants as the final, final outcome. Now, are there, are there different, tell me about the different implants. So there's different types of implants. There's obviously silicone implants versus saline implants. I think now um, the reason Dr. Hill and I use so much uh, implant-based reconstruction as the implants are so much safer than they used to be. The old stories of silicone implants leaking are kind of gone now. These new generation of implants um, that have been coined the gummy bear implants, you can essentially chop them in half and they're not going to leak. So I think that's changed the safety profile and that's why um, it's very rare, at least in our hands, to ever utilize saline implants anymore. So pretty much um, silicone implants are our main uh, form of breast reconstruction and as well as cosmetic breast surgery. And the risk of that's from the implant itself is very low, low. It's very low now, yes. It's, it's much, much less lower than it ever used to be. Now, tell me about the recovery time. Is it, is it outpatient, uh, inpatient? How long does it take? The, the first step, which again usually takes place at the time of a mastectomy, is the hardest step. And it's an overnight hospital stay, about a one to two week recovery. Most people feel better once drains come out. Um, and that usually takes about 10 to 14 days. Um, the, and then, you know, it's a multi-step process to get to the final outcome. Um, and the, the latter stages are much easier and they're outpatient. Well, now, we talked a little bit about breast cancer, but there's other reasons. There's other, I guess, medical reasons, other cosmetic reasons uh, to do breast surgeries. Yeah, I think that our practice is um, pretty also well-versed in cosmetic surgery of the breast, so breast augmentation, breast lifts. And so you can utilize implants for both of those to achieve your goals. And, and uh, we do a lot of that as well in, um, in our practice as well. Some, some people present to our office and um, they want their breasts to look more shapely and people are sometimes um, surprised that in order to make their breasts more shapely not only do we need to do a breast lift but we also need to place a you know lower profile implant to give it a better shape because as we age we lose a lot of volume in the um, superior pole of the breast and there's no way to physically push breast tissue up there and keep it there. It won't stay. So you have to use an implant uh, to give it a better shape. So for medical reasons, cosmetic reasons, you, you do the reconstructions and then you're left with, okay, do I get a mammogram next year and how do the implants uh, affect a mammogram, Dr. Williams? So for someone who's had breast cancer, they don't really need mammograms anymore because they're no longer breast tissue. Um, and they would follow up with an MRI if there's a question. Whereas someone for a cosmetic reason can still get mammograms, there's no change in that at all. Uh, mammographers are very well versed now because cosmetic implants are so popular and so prevalent, uh, it's standard of care to do a, a mammogram with a breast implant does not cause any difference at all, doesn't cause any uh, change in your cancer screening profile either. Now, just in terms of insurance, for, for medical reasons, it's, it's sometimes covered, cosmetics difference, but there's all, you, you need to check that out before you get your, get your surgery, I would say. Typically, um, breast implants are not covered by insurance for, insurance for cosmetic purposes. So, for instance, if someone's coming in for an augmentation to be larger or a, a breast lift where we feel that a breast implant would benefit them, them in terms of shape, insurance typically does not cover that. Um, they do cover uh, instances of breast um, reconstruction. 
Um, a little off topic, there, there is um, an instance where we can do what's called oncoplastic surgery, where we work with a breast surgeon who does a partial mastectomy, and sometimes we'll use an implant, and that is covered by insurance. But you have to have a breast cancer diagnosis. Okay. That's great information. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much.